Hello. Dear participants, uh, you are welcome to the sixth session. Uh, we have five presentation in this session. Uh, you can speak uh, Turkish uh, or English. Uh, you all have 10 minutes to make your presentation. Uh, please respect to the time the time given to you. Uh, I would like to uh, invite the first uh, presentation, uh, Ece Aksoy, uh, for, uh, for the first presentation. Uh, the presentation title, Mapping Anatolian Steppe, Region and Ecosystem Types by Using Earth Observation and GIS. Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you very much. You can start. Okay, I will share my screen and I will make my yes. presentation in English. Uh, you can see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will present uh, Anatolian steppe characterization and how we, we uh, made this steppe region mapping um, by using remote sensing, earth observation and GIS. I'm presenting on behalf of our team. Uh, and um, this is part of uh, one of the output of this agricultural implication for ecosystem-based adaptation to climate change and step ecosystem project uh, of FAO. Um, as, you, as you know, Steppes uh, regions uh, is one of the most ecologically important and vulnerable ecosystems in Turkey. And Turkey's steppe ecosystems include mass, uh, pastures, meadows, and grasslands. And uh, it approximately um, 30, uh, covers an area, uh, 32 million hectare of Turkey. Um, steppe ecosystems uh, can be seen in Eastern and Central uh, Anatolia, and also uh, in the high mountains of the Aegean uh, and Mediterranean regions. Um, we decided to, to, um, <clears throat> to this study by uh, the literature survey, what are the available uh, studies uh, in, uh, on uh, Anatolian steppe ecosystem. And we, uh, we uh, characterized uh, the, uh, we found the characteristics to map uh, the uh, region. Uh, it's usually uh, characterized by vegetation, forests, climate, major habitat types, and species. But there was no common definition uh, for the Anatolian steppe ecosystems and its characteristics. And even though there are several studies uh, and several um, endemic uh, species in the region, there, there is not clear border. Uh, that's why uh, we, we went through the all uh, literature survey, all articles. Uh, and and we saw uh, we used uh, some of the uh, layers that were uh, was presented, uh, especially um, Ambar Le uh, at all uh, article was very uh, helpful on our study. But the, uh, the first thing we uh, we should uh, we were agreed uh, to to uh, characterize the, the define the what is Anatolian step there. Um, after uh, this definition um, being agreed with the all uh, colleagues uh, in Turkey, uh, we defined the steppe and uh, characterized the uh, important layers. And we, we compiled the all relevant data and we made analysis. And also we looked at the impacts um, on the uh, finding the impacts of the uh, region. Um, we, we uh, described the characteristics and we used uh, uh, land cover, uh, ecosystem types, geological and material, uh, soil characteristics, um, annual precipitation, uh, elevation, uh, and the, the climate uh, characteristics we took into account. And we, um, we prepared all of the layers available in Turkey and also from the global sources layers like uh, Korean uh, or European Space Agency land cover maps, ecosystem types maps of uh, European Environment Agency. Um, yeah, other climatic data, we calculated NDVI. Um, 
we, we all know there's available Korean land cover classes uh, for uh, also Turkey, including all Europe and Turkey. We uh, take this land cover uh, layer um, and we reclassified uh, the layers. Also, we took global land cover and 30 meter uh, tree cover because tree uh, characterization is very important. Uh, that's why uh, we, we uh, find a, a better resolution map from global land cover. And also uh, we use other uh, forest types, um, very high resolution data uh, from European Environment Agency. And we reclassify all uh, layers because we have to take out the forest layers from the steppe region. Um, yeah, there are uh, very interesting details, but I will not go through all of them with the layers um, for the, yeah, we, we reclassify the final forest layer. And as you can see in the map, the uh, green areas is the forest areas. We should take out that mask from the uh, region. Uh, the step character should be, um, should not take into account forest. That's why we should take out the forest first of all. And uh, ecosystem uh, types map uh, also be used. There are uh, two uh, step uh, um, uh, name uh, in the ecosystem type maps. We took into account those um, inland salt steppes and garrix uh, from the European Environment Agency. And we also need um, need to characterize vegetation characteristics. That's why we we calculated NDVI and um, EVI with by using the um, remote sensing uh, satellite imagery. Uh, this is the um, formulation of the uh, EVI enhanced vegetation index. Uh, it uses um, near infrared, red, and blue bands. Uh, EVI characteristics from MODIS uh, Terra uh, satellites uh, are calculated for each of, uh, not each of the month, but every two months for January, February, March, April, May, June. July and August, September and October, November and December, and uh, for the long, uh, long year period, and we we uh, we realized that the uh, July and August uh, layers gave us the whole uh, picture, um, and we reclassify again um, enhanced vegetation index uh, long term uh, series and the NDVI uh, lowest quantile uh, layers. Also, we took into account as again modest um, land surface temperature for day and daytime and nighttime. It gave a very interesting signatures of the in Anatolian characters uh, step there. And we calculated aridity index. Uh, again, it's very important uh, layer for steppe region. Uh, also, we took into account the soil layers, especially the salinity uh, of the soil and soil pH. Uh, pH. Um, and uh, uh, another important characteristics was the um, elevation. We reclassify the elevation characteristics uh, in the given threshold. And um, we also use the uh, step uh, uh, dependent bird uh, data. We, uh, we model the species distribution. This data is uh, from the eBird uh, and uh, almost 1 million entries uh, are found for the step uh, dependent birds we uh, model by using again land cover and DVI, uh, et cetera, layers. And it gave us some of the borders as well. Uh, and then we overlay, these are the final layers. We, uh, we reclassify, we analyze everything and we overlay those layers and we, we get the final, uh, our final borders, which is uh, on the blue, blue one. Um, and uh, this uh, final uh, map is, uh, is obtained uh, by using earth observation data and which is given on the uh, bottom. This is the Anatolian steppe border and also we, we um, we give the uh, different types of steppe. For example, uh, this is the, it's not only the uh, border, but also the different types uh, in uh, steppe. For example, the red ones uh, are characterized by um, less than 300 millimeter average uh, rainfall in the semi-arid region. 
and its uh, elevation is between uh, zero and 800. But er, there's also another very similar characteristics, but it's the higher elevation step. This kind of uh, different types are also found. Um, yeah, this different uh, characteristics of the region and ecosystem type maps for the steppe region is analyzed. And then we look also to the impacts on the, uh, on the steppe region. What are the main pressures, drivers, um, impacts on the steppe region are also analyzed in a big report. I'm just uh, giving the very short summary here. Um, and in this study, finally, the, the, uh, we, we managed to uh, delineate the border of the Anatolian steppe region, and um, it, it's totally uh, uh, produced uh, based on the Earth observation data uh, by using the GIS technologies uh, and uh, the mentioned um, layers like the forest land map, surface temperature, etc., uh, and interpretation of other sources. The mapping activity totally based on the convergence of the evidences approach, uh, which uh, provided the cost-effective, scientifically sound uh, mapping techniques. Um, this, uh, this can be applied also to the other region, I guess. Um, and the signatures of the steppe region uh, are found. Um, the outputs of this study can be, based, can be used as a baseline to monitor the changes in the region uh, for, the, for the other years to look to the impacts. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much. Çok teşekkür ederim. Thank you, dear Aksoy. I hope Thank it's yeah on time. Uh, yes, the next presentation uh, title is Current State of the Endem Fritalia Eduardi and its Introduction to the Chi Valley. Uh, yes, Nazgul Iman Berdieva. Please, you can start. Dear Iman Berdivar, please uh, open screen share for your presentation. Okay. Hello, dear participants of the Congress. Greetings from San Kogstan. So, first of all, I apologize in evidence for my English. Uh, today's topics of my report is uh, the current state of the plant uh, garden and its uh, introduction in the tree valley. Uh, uh, this topic is relevant in our country because its flower is rare and protected by the government. As we know, the original name of the flower is Fitzilaria Eduardo Regan. Uh, but local people um, call it a unique uh, flower. I do um, what's mean in Kogis, moon flower. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this unique uh, flower grows in Batken region of the Kogistan. The Batken Valley is located in the uh, southwestern part of the west sunshine of the Kogistan. About three and four of these borders are in the international. The region is rich in a variety of landscapes that are characterized by the exponentially rich um, biodiversity. And uh, so the Vitilaria uh, Eduardi uh, includes in the Red Book of the Caucasus Republic is uh, assessment of decorative characters of this plant when grown in the condition in the true valley is given research land. Vitilaria uh, Eduardo was carried by uh, 2018, 2020 years. The vital state of population of this species varies is different ecotopes. There are categories of the persons and the uh, depressed individuals. General state of the population of Tilare Eduardi is alarming to the small number of the endemic plant in the uh, anthropogenic load. Uh, to uh, preserve the species, it is necessary to limit 
the anthropogenic load in the growing areas prohibit and control the collection of this plant by the population carry out uh, continuous um, monitoring of the state of populations in the Igul Tash Nature uh, Reserve. Cecilia Eduardi, uh, the height is 1 and 1.5 mils, it grows with the Igul Tash Mountains or the Igul Tash Village along the uh, Turkestan Ridge, um, uh, which located in Batkia. Located near the village Karabula, the uh, habitat of this species was located on the uh, shadowy uh, slopes of the above mentioned mountain. One on the opposite side of the mountain, Kozulan Tash, which created shade uh, from endemic plants, blooms in the month of April from the flowering period just uh, lasted just two weeks. In uh, local legends, uh, tales and uh, myths, it's called a symbol of law and courage. Uh, so here you see the uh, place of the uh, icon, uh, icon flowers. Uh, and uh, so in, in a number of countries around the world, the uh, world particularly Eduardi is uh, Tajikistan 10%, in Sweden 4%, in Kyrgyzstan 2%, in Belgium and Germany 1%. And in the above mentioned countries, it also are rare species. Uh, the maximum high of these mountains uh, is uh, 39 uh, degrees, 50, uh, 56 and 70 degrees, uh, 30. Uh, six and uh, uh, one thousand uh, six six hundred ninety uh, four meters above the sea levels. The northern foot in the altitude for one thousand four uh, hundred uh, fourteen meters above the sea level. In the growth of belt, it's in the the absolute high above one thousand. Uh, 550 meters above sea level. Sadness of the north is the slope, the 30, 50 degrees. Um, average uh, plant high and mountain of flowers. So the plant high is uh, 615.54 thousand millimeters. Uh, and the number of flowers per individual is 4.24. And the uh, shortened uh, recorded uh, specimen had the high of the uh, 317 millimeters. And the, the one flower and 20 cells and five and few leaves. And the uh, tail is 950 millimeters. 13 flowers, 38 seed and 27 official uh, levels, uh, leaves, uh, width of uh, lower leaves in the uh, studied population, uh, 50 to 120 millimeters. So in plant grown in the shade, the maximum length of the leaf blade reach to 125 millimeters, the diameter of the flower is 100 millimeters and the uh, petal length is uh, 65 millimeters. So average annual uh, air volume for two, uh, uh, 2018 and 2019 in Chu and uh, Batken Valleys were almost identical with a small difference for 2020, five months were taken into account. So um, here you see the temperatures of the air, the day and night uh, that we compare. They are so uh, similar. Uh, plant uh, introduction is a method of studying of the progress of plant adaption of new conditions in an experiment with the introduced adaptive uh, cap uh, capabilities and changing in morphological characterize are uh, revealed. Cultivating a wild living species outside of their natural habits is very difficult, unlike cultivars. Lilies need sunny or slightly 
shaded areas uh, that are protected from the strong winds. According to the literature the data, lilies need a loose uh, nutrition water uh, permeable uh, soil with a natural reaction. So with a high um, equity and excessive mosses are uh, unsuitable for the lilies. Uh, the place of the uh, introduction in our experiment was the Alamedian district. The blocks were uh, dug from a local resident's garden. This plant came to him uh, at the seat after the descent of uh, mud flows in 2001. The current after heavy rain washed away the uh, certain numbers of plants, water flowering down the slope of the uh, I would uh, reach uh, brought them to the side of the road in the village of Aiguntash. Aigun, as the local uh, name, as you know, called the grew up along the road. Cars may stop or pass it by, drive cattle away, or just might be trampled by passers by. A resident decided to dig them up and plant them at least in their year and uh, preserve the endemic species. Uh, species. In uh, 2018, in order to preserve and settle these uh, species in the northern region of Republic, the bulbs were brought uh, to the True Valley in the fall. The bulbs were small in size with uh, diameter uh, of five to uh, six uh, centimeters. They were planted, uh, taking into uh, account all the requirements they need. So in this picture, uh, you see the in the first year after planting uh, in the late March and early April, we plants grew up uh, to eight, uh, 10 centimeters high, usually in order you know, uh, not to exhaust it, the plants and uh, bound that period in the first year are removed, but uh, we left uh, one bud at a time. Instead of the large, uh, brightly colored flowers, a small, uh, light yellow and orange flower appeared. The flowering period lasted the same as a natural condition uh, for two weeks. Uh, so uh, here the pictures, uh, that's in the first year. Uh, and the second is, um, in the second year, 2019, during the period from March 2019, the uh, daytime and the nighttime air temperature was 28 degrees in the uh, uh, degrees, and the true valley, which uh, created the optimal temperature for plant growth compared to the 2018. Growth processes were normal, same length uh, 30 centimeters, average left length uh, 15 to 20 centimeters. Leaves are uh, alternate and approached to the stem. In the last week of March, the good flowers uh, fully bloomed. The flowers does not in need of uh, fragrance, but their beauty uh, attracts attention. So uh, currently, the problem of the uh, conversation of red plant and species is becoming more uh, uh, urgent every day. The only uh, way to serve the rare, highly endemic plant sp uh, species in the condition of the total cultivation, uh, cultivation. Um, of landscape and uh, wasn't territories of. Uh, please complete your presentation as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, the, uh, the success of the such work requires many years of researches, extensive and observation and scientific uh, generalization. <clears throat> so, 
So um, uh, there is an adoption. This uh, will be a main focus on the species conversation stage in the near future. Uh, uh, thank you. Is it okay, Nish? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. oh, okay, so um, it's uh, so thank you for your attention. Uh, so I see that uh, we have no time. Of course, if we have uh, more time, I uh, would like to talk about legends, but unfortunately, maybe next time I will uh, tell you about the uh, because we have the beautiful legend about the fantastic flower local. People have told us uh, one of the beautiful legends of two loving hearts. So uh, I think, um, so thank you for your attention. Okay. Can uh, next presentation. The next presentation title is Protein Loot Profile of Lux of the Kyrgyz Population and Cattle of the Alatov Breed. Uh, Bermet Kidralyaeva will present uh, this presentation. Okay. Hello, the organizing team and the participants. Uh, can you see my presentation? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, okay, thank you. So my name is Bermet Kudralyeva and I'm a research assistant at Kyrgyz Turkish Manas University, biology department. Today, I want to share study results on protein blood profile of yaks of the Kyrgyz population and cattle of the Alatau breed. So the aim of the study was to provide the analyze, analysis of total protein levels in blood serum of yaks of the Kyrgyz population and cattle of the Alatau breed. Comparative analysis of total protein levels in blood serum of experimental animals is shown in this figure, figure one. As can be seen from the graph, the high altitude housing, uh, conditions for animals such as cows, uh, you can see them in blue colors, post taurus. Slightly lowers with this uh, indicator. So in cows of the control group, the habitation height of which is uh, 660, 760 meters above sea level, the average value of this indicator was equal to 6.8 gram per deciliter, deciliter, while with an increase in keeping altitude, the concentration of total protein was 5.7 or 5.3 grams per deciliter. In semi-wild animals, which is yaks, Adapted to high altitude conditions, the level of this indicator was within 6 and 1 uh, grams per deciliter and 6.7 uh, grams per deciliter. Mm, without a significant difference from the control group. The dynamics of the values of the total, pro total protein fractions in yaks of the Kyrgyz population and cows of the Alatau breed kept at different heights is shown in figure two. Let me show you figure two. So you can see this dynamics of, of albumin and globulin values in yaks and cows kept at different heights. In our study, at an altitude of, of 2,200 meters above sea uh, level, the concentration of homogeneous fraction of albumin in experimental domestic animals with a significant difference was 3.75 grams per deciliter, while albumin in semi-wild animals with a highly significantly reduced result was equal to 3.42 grams per deciliter. 
the heterogeneous fraction of the total protein of globulin in calves of the Alatau breed is significantly reduced by 1.96 grams per deciliter, while in yaks in the blood serum, this indicator was slightly higher compared with calves of the control group. Uh, it means 2.71 grams per deciliter. So the altitude of 3,200 meters above sea level in cows lowered the albumin fraction to a value of 3.53 uh, grams per deciliter, respectively, while in yaks it was equal to 3.96 gram per deciliter with a slight decrease. The comparison is analyzed with a control group of cows kept at an altitude of 760 meters above sea level. Uh, the result was significantly uh, lower in experimental cows with a value of um, 1.81 grams per deciliter. In turn, the analysis of the data showed a slightly high in yaks, 2.72 grams per deciliter. Compared to the control group, control group of cows, the concentration of globulin in which respectively, respectively was equal to 2.73 uh, grams per deciliter. I'm sorry. So you can see all the dynamics of protein values on the screen. Thus, the analysis of the data showed that in terms of the activity of total albumin and globulin in the blood serum of experimental animals, these indicators were within the physiological norm. However, a significant difference was established in the protein fractions of cows of the Alatau breed with an increase in altitude and a decrease in the concentration of albumin and globulin was observed. Uh, the albumin fraction in the yaks of the Kyrgyz population increased with a high level of confidence. There was a slight decrease in the albumin fraction in the yaks of the high pasture land. The globulin fraction in comparison with the control group was slightly increased in both conditions of habitation. The biochemical status characterizing hyperproteinemia, in which there is a decrease in albumin and globulin, due to an increase in the activity of serum transaminases, which belong to the group of indicator enzymes, has great diagnostic value, and it also was observed in our study. It was also noted that albumin is a reserve protein. In case of insufficient intake of protein with food or with hyperproteinemia of another genesis, the liver can compensate the deficiency for some time and it does not cause changes in the structural and functional state of the liver. The low level of the global infraction is explained by the insufficient production of animals' own proteins and their low intake, and we think it caused by a violation of the watering system. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Uh, next uh, presentation. Uh, is design principles of the Rose Garden built in National Botanical Garden of Turkey. Kulce Art uh, will present this yeah. presentation. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi, hi everyone. Wait a minute, please. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the presentation. Uh, I am Tuche Art from Turkey, and I am currently working as a city planner in the National Botanical Gardens of Turkey. And today I'm going to explain you the design principles of the Rose Garden that we built in National Botanical Gardens of Turkey. Um, I will uh, start with explaining the rose and its cultural value, and uh, later the Rose Garden. And then at the end, I will uh, try to explain our design principles of rose garden that we built. And um, let's say um, the rose family is one of the most important plant families uh, in the world with more than 3,000 members. And it includes many fruits such as uh, apples, strawberries, etc. And also, it includes one of our best loved garden plants. 
which is Rose. Uh, Rose has quite complicated family tree containing estimated um, estimated uh, 150 to 250 species, uh, which are widely distributed in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and North America. Uh, and Turkey, as uh, the giant tourism center for mineral species, has 25 native rose species distributed uh, over more than half of the country. Rose has been uh, one of the significant symbols of love and beauty and it is one of the most ancient flowers originated in, in Central Asia. Uh, the evidence shows that rose is around uh, 35 million years old, and according to the researchers, the cultivation of the rose has begun in China 5,000 years ago. Uh, in the late 18th century, uh, cultivated roses were, were introduced to Europe from China. Uh, throughout history, uh, it is used in many cultures for several purposes. Uh, they used for medicinal purposes, used as confetti, as celebrations, uh, a source of a uh, perfume, and it has taken great place in poetry, religion, art, and literature through the history. Um, roses can be categorized in several topics. Uh, the most used categorization uh, of roses that reflects both the botanical and evolutionary progress of the rose are made by American Rose Society. Uh, you can see species roses, old garden roses, and modern roses. And also they can be categorized according to their forms. Um, hybrid teas and grandiflora, flurabindas and polyanthas, neuter and miniflora, shrub roses and climbing roses, and et cetera. Um, with this great variety of features, uh, roses are used in intensively in the in the garden. Uh, according to available records before the uh, fall of Rome, there were around uh, 2,000 public rose gardens throughout the empire. And in countries uh, where Islamic culture has spread, the rose is the most popular plant of garden art. Uh, it, it is associated with Prophet Muhammad. Uh, in Ottoman Empire, roses were not just used in palaces, uh, they also used in public places and there were several rose gardens in Istanbul. Uh, the forerunner of the rose garden, as we know uh, today, is, was planted by Napoleon's wife, Josephine de Bourne, at Malmaison in France uh, in, 19, in, in uh, 1799. And the garden included more than 250 varieties of rose. Uh, also, one of the oldest still existing public rose gardens is a uh, Jules Grover Rose, the Val de Morne Rose Garden, which is in Paris and still remains the biggest rose garden in France. Today, um, a rose garden or a rosarium is a garden or park used to exhibit and cultivate various types of roses. And uh, today, uh, public rose gardens exist in many cities and towns. Uh, with the rich botanical and botanical features of the rose, uh, to sponsor their uh, variability and inform society about their features. Majority of the uh, botanical gardens of the world uh, embody rose gardens in their site. You can see the examples in the page. Uh, the first one is from New York Botanical Garden, and the second one is from the Chief Garden, and uh, Jindai Botanical Garden in Japan, and Adelaide Botanical Garden in Australia. Uh, hence, um, a rose garden uh, was an essential garden that uh, should be built in National Botanical Garden of Turkey. Before uh, mentioning about the principles, I would like to tell you the development of uh, National Botanical Garden of Turkey briefly. In uh, 2005, Botanical Garden idea is started and the garden is founded in Ankara uh, with the decree law and uh, with the decree law announced in 2011. Uh, in 2013, a groundbreaking ceremony has been held and the directorate uh, is established in 2018. The garden is uh, located on the public transportation road in between uh, Beitepe and Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. Uh, the aim of the botanical garden is to promote awareness, uh, study and conservation of plant species diversity and provide recreational facilities for the public in general. Hence, uh, we, several projects of concept gardens uh, are planned, some of which are in construction period and some of which are in design process. 
Uh, one of these gardens is the Rose Garden. Uh, the garden area is selected according to its appropriateness of visibility for pedestrians and vehicles and for being nearer to one of the central areas of the garden, which is RMD Center. Our concern was to design an aesthetic and pleasant environment um, by considering the cultural value of the society. Moreover, to design an area uh, which is appealing for all kinds of users, uh, from disabled people to old people. Uh, materials, uh, as we aimed a universal design, uh, we chose concrete as the pathway material for easier walk uh, for pedestrians and easier ride for wheelchairs, uh, wheelchair users. Uh, also, as the area is quite sloppy, uh, the inclination is kept uh, under the value of eight percentage. Uh, the materials in general are uh, chosen to correspond uh, the general design um, material of the botanical garden, like wooden benches, uh, concrete pathways, and untreated colored stood structures. Uh, in the design process, we have developed several designs, uh, and as in Ottoman culture, geometrical design was adapted in the use of flowers. Uh, in our design, uh, we decided to go with the geometrical design. Um, we designed uh, a main square uh, in which you, you can see the garden panoramically and a main axis that constitutes attractive elements uh, for the aesthetic value uh, of the garden palms, arcades, pergolas, as essential garden elements have been placed on this axis. Uh, two pergolas have been built on the top points of the slope as terraces, a larger pergola in the intersection point of the two main axes. Uh, and a smaller pergola is a um, hidden point of the garden. Uh, three arcade ways have been constructed, uh, as wider one, wider and longer, one in entrance and one at the central part of the garden and before the hidden pergola. Uh, the road is located uh, around the pergolas and arcades, all placed tribute to the traditional uh, rose symbolism of celebration and ceremony and love. So, uh, poems. Uh, two ponds have been con constructed. Sorry, uh, two ponds have been constructed, and a natural-looking pond at the main entrance with the landmark, landmark uh, tree, which is uh, weeping below, Felix Babylonica. Uh, the reason for choosing weeping below tree is that um, it is it has been seen as a divine element in Turkish culture, with its blended and fragment body, uh, and on. Um, and also an ornamental pond uh, with a fountain is located on the way to Hidden Pergola, but they are, uh, as you see, they are still in construction. Uh, the garden contains around 5,000 uh, individuals from eight modern uh, garden rose species uh, that have different colors and forms. Uh, they are planted according to their colors to create a color field view. Climbing roses, uh, tree roses are used in, uh, shrub roses are used in garden. Uh, in the garden, uh, after the small touches, it will be an aesthetic and a uh, pleasant environment for the public. Uh, and however, uh, for now, uh, the number of species uh, that are existing in the garden is too small uh, for the botanical garden. As we, aim to con uh, as we aim to conserve the diversity of roses and increase awareness of society uh, about their importance in further periods, uh, we will display and conserve most of the rose species that are native to uh, Turkey. Uh, after reaching our aim uh, on diversity of species, we believe that National Botanical Garden of Turkey uh, will serve as an important educational center for people to learn more sensibility of the roses. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lira, for presentation. Your presentation. Uh, okay, we can pass uh, the last uh, presentation. The presentation title is Failed Performance of Willows in the National Botanical Garden of Turkey. Pelin Ajar uh, will present this presentation. You can start here, Ajar. Thank you. Hello. I try to share my screen. Can you see my screen now? No, 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 it can't. You 
It can open to share screen. Is it okay now? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello, dear participants and organization team. After a good presentation of two chair from National Botanical Garden of Turkey, I would like to present the title Field Performance of Willow in the National Botanical Garden of Turkey. I'm, uh, I'm working in there about two years as a biologist, by the way. So I would like to start with um, uh, select species in the world. Uh, this family has two genus, Populus and Salix. Uh, they love the habitats with high lights and water demands. They are deciduous woody plants and they are really economic. They have um, economical values, uh, like they are the pioneer substance of aspirin, or they can be used in phytoremediation and or uh, bioenergy studies. Today, I would like to talk about um, traits of them uh, in landscape usage, in uh, horticulture usage as ornamental plants. So how about the situation in Turkey? The, this, um, this map shows the distribution of Cyrix genus in the world. It represents by 500 species and they are always located in the northern hemisphere. In Turkey, we have 27 species and three of them are endemic to Turkey. So I want to show some photographs uh, from the world. Uh, this is Salix alba uh, vitelliana. They are used for the red branches and they are cultivated forms. And this is uh, called flamingo willows, uh, Salix integra. Uh, they are used in Japan and uh, especially for gardening uh, it is used. Uh, it's a Salix caprea, the cultivated forms pendula, with its view uh, in February, they have good catkins or amentums. And also it is Salix matsudana with curl branches. Uh, and lastly, this is Salix discolors uh, as a pussy willows, uh, very commonly used in America. Uh, we can see. So um, with the, in the study, we purpose to reveal the field performance of six species in our will of garden uh, by analyzing the four month growth in phyton program. To do that, uh, we collect some cuttings from National Botanical Garden. We have already some beloves in our area. So we also go to, went to Middle East Technical University, Chubuk and Bainam in Ankara. And to collect our endemic species, we went to Mula. As a result, uh, we have 140 cuttings from uh, relevant samples and uh, from seven psychic species, we can say. Uh, to gather the data, uh, we went these locations uh, in March and in, uh, um, during the February in Ankara and Mula province, as I said before. And then in May, uh, we planted them in our outdoor villa gardens we called Gallery Willow Gardens, 49 individuals of seven species, including one exotic species, we say, because it includes Salix Matsudana. So then um, 49 uh, pots or cuttings selected to test the field performance in that garden. Then we observed them about four months. Then we made an analysis by the help of the Phyton program. These are the characters, according to literature, of course, Salix literature, morphological characters or habitat preferences we choose uh, to test or to uh, measure height, diameter, pathogen presence in leaf, habitat preference, stem shape, stem color, leaf density, leaf shape, leaf color, and the branch habit, and we secured them uh, this is the photos uh, from our uh, garden, actually. This map shows uh, before <clears throat> planting them, we organize every details. 
which place we uh, plant them, construct them. And before it, this is the view the photographs shows, before planting the villa gardens. So in order to do that, first in February, uh, we went to Chubuk, for example. This is the photographs from excursion. Then we select or choose the branches without uh, flowers or cutkins. These materials are used to conserve them, uh, these cuttings in a suitable condition. Then we went to a laboratory and put them on water to make them rooted. These are the pots we use about five liters. Then we plant our cuttings, we label it. One month later, they are getting, uh, they were getting foliated. And by measuring in the field in May, we transfer our old cuttings to the uh, gallery, below gallery gardens. Because some of them are shrubs and some of them are trees, we uh, try to uh, organize by the help of our architectures. Then this is the weaves of the first weave of our shoots from the gardens. Then uh, how many species or how many samples we use, you can see from the diagrams. Uh, the selectionary species are much more the green bar, you can see, much more than the others. Secondly, Salix capria we use more and Salix matsudana. And after analysis in Python, uh, we can say that um, the selected characters, the interaction between the characters were determined as meaningful for the stem color, for leaf color, leaf density and branch habit which have significant p-values. So let's look at the uh, four months growth, uh, especially height. Uh, the Cerex fragilis uh, was the um, first uh, species, I mean, has um, great performance, great development in height, you can see, uh, especially in August and September, we can say. Secondly, Cerex capria show great performance uh, in September. And Cerex cinerea, the third one for the height uh, performance, we can say. And when we look at the Salix diameter at height, uh, again, uh, Salix fragile species uh, shows great performance. And when we look at the, our endemic CPCs, uh, July performance is good with the yellow bar. And I want to say that, uh, interestingly, the Salix matsudana uh, did not grow, uh, grow uh, very good in September. A little bit after a little bit observation, we detect that uh, it can be as a result of it's so we plant them near to walnuts. So maybe it's because of the uh, its effect. And as soon as possible, we're going to pruning the walnuts uh, to make our matsudana bigger. Uh, of course, uh, during the experiment, we faced lots of troubles. Uh, for example, uh, some uh, pots uh, not foliated, uh, and we have some dogs in the field, so they broke the labels. Or uh, we have some pots uh, with misidentification. We cannot transport our uh, pots to the field. Then unexpected uh, June cold affect the Salix capria. For example, you can see from in the middle of the slides easily, the, the leaves of the Salix capria affected by the June cold. Then in July, we try to transport some trees directly to our uh, willow garden. Uh, we use, um, before going there, we did everything, but unfortunately, according to uh, very bad condi transfer condition in the car or uh, hot weather, when we came to the greenhouses, uh, all three species we found and all uh, the leaves were dropped, unfortunately. Then this is, as a result, all these efforts, we construct these 
uh, willow garden. And these are the species uh, having growth uh, well or having uh, good visualization. Salix fragilis, Salix uh, purpurea subspecies, Leucodermis, and Salix cinerea. Uh, uh, all these species planted in there according to their coverage area. I mean, because some of them are shrubs and some of them are trees. As a result, as a conclusion, we can say, uh, according to four month analysis of two way ANOVA, uh, Salix fragilis had the highest plant height and diameter, diameter at height. The meaningful characters for Salix gardens, stem leaf, uh, leaf color, leaf density, and branch habit, we can say. And these species, the uh, three species, Salix cinerea, Salix fragilis, Salix purpurea subspecies, Leucodermis endemic to Turkey, were suitable with fast growing and landscape visualization for exhibition in the botanical gardens. And thank you for listening. All the evaluation comments and the question will be welcome. Thank you, Dear Ajar, for your presentation. Uh, dear participants, uh, there are uh, any questions uh, delivered to me by WhatsApp? Uh, is there anyone want to ask a question to presenters? No. Okay. Uh, so we can finish these sessions. Are you? I can ask one question uh, <laughs> to uh, Ece Hanım, Ece Aksoy. <laughs> First of all, thank you for your good presentation. I really like the maps you used. Uh, do you have, because it is an important uh, area, I'm told you in spe, uh, steps with very high diversity, you know that. Uh, do you have any plan to make projection uh, with your maps? I mean, the future projection to make uh, more conservation uh, or to decide the conservation criteria uh, by the help of some programs, for example. Do you have any uh, idea or any suggestion about that? Yeah, it's great, great idea, Pilin. Uh, but uh, we don't have any uh, resources to continue to the study. But we already looked to the uh, several impacts, um, for example, the infrastructure uh, on the steppe region uh, or any other land cover land usages um, on the vegetation uh, it would be great definitely if we can continue with the projections and also with the um, climate change scenario projections as well yeah. and overlay yeah. Um, yeah that's a very good idea but if we can find the sources <laughs> thank you for your question <laughs> thank you your answer <laughs> Have a question? No. Okay, uh, we can finish uh, this session. I would like to thank uh, for your presentations and valuable information. And uh, I wish all of you good and healthy days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Hocam aşağıda e, mikrofon mute ya da mute olmuştur büyük bir ihtimal. Ona bir bakar mısınız? Sol tarafta. Mouse'u götürdüğünüz zaman çıkıyor. Merhabalar.